Minä olen Jorma Tikkanen, toimin Ekrimen tapahtumien työntekijänä. Ja tota, Ekrim tapahtumat on tehnyt autonäyttelyitä sekä ulkoilmatapahtumia nyt kahdeksan vuotta. Eli tämä Ekrim Karso on jo kahdeksasta vuotta. Nyt tänä vuonna ensimmäistä kertaa messukeskuksessa. Eli tähän asti on, on toiminut tuolla jäähallilla ja koko aika näyttely kasvanut siihen malliin, että nyt sitten suurimmissa puitteissa messukeskuksessa uskon, että pääsee täyteen loistoonsa. Eli, eli tota, hieno näyttely tulossa. Toinen puolikas ekstremä tapahtumissa on sitten nämä ulkoilmatapahtumat, eli siellä on erilaisia autonäyttelyitä, autokilpailuja, niitä myös tehty, tehty tuon saman ajan. Ekrim Car Show, tosiaan kahdeksasta vuotta nyt olemassa, koko aika, koko aika suuremmalla ja suuremmalla näyttelykalustolla, ja näyttelykaluston taso koko ajan kasvaa. Tänä vuonna, mitä tuossa on kerran hallissa, niin on erittäin upea näyttely aukeamassa. Ja tota, sanotaan, että kolme vetonaulaa on tänä vuonna, ja kaksi heistä on tässä paikalla, päästään jututtamaan, ja kolmas on tuolla alhaalla hallissa, eli toivon, että siinä kohtaa, kun Tämä, tämä keskustelu on saatu päätettyä, niin siirrytään kaikki tuohon päähalliin, missä on tämä jo hieman mediassa näkynyt Bugatti Veyron, eli maailman kallein auto sijaitsee tuolla messuständillä, niin mennään katsomaan sitä. Siitä saadaan nyt 12 aukeen näyttely, niin tota, teillä on hyvä aika kierrellä siinä ja saada ovet auki ja muuta, jos haluaa auton sisältä kuvia näin, eli katsotaan se läpi. Ää, muuten itse autonäyttelyssä niin on, on muutamia Eri, eri aiheita, tai itse asiassa teemoja on yhteensä 20 kappaletta, eli siellä on messuhallit jaettu moneen eri teemaan ja aina haettu yhden teeman alle samanlaisia autoja tai samasta auto- tai yleensäkin moottoriharrastuksesta, eli myös moottoripyöriä näytillä, eli saatu saman teeman alle samanlaisia kalusteita. Ja se mikä on, on erittäin huomattavaa on se, että hallissa tapahtuu koko aika paljon, eika siellä on useampi eri alue, missä tehdään koko aika jotain, varmaan Pääkohtaan tämä tämmöinen auton rakentelukilpailu, eli siellä on Suomen joukkue vastaan Ruotsin joukkue. Molemmilla on nyt, kun messut aukeaa, niin siinä kohtalaisen vakio auto omassa pilttuussaan ja sitä ruvetaan sitten rakentamaan, eli tälle tuunaamaan kansankielellä, eli ruvetaan sitten laittamaan varusteita kiinni. Ja koko viikonlopun ajan niin siinä on hyvät katsomot, missä yleisö pääsee tätä katsomaan. Ja tämä käsittääkseni tulee myös sitten livestreaminä, eli yleisö pääsee seuraamaan myös sitten livenä netissä. Muita alueita on, siellä on tämmöinen tota, hotrodin rakentelualue, eli sieltä ikkunoiden takaa voi seurata, kun rakennetaan hotrodia paikan päällä. Ja sitten on tämmöinen niin sanottu stripe rama, eli missä on sitten tämmöinen pinstripe-kulttuuri, niin siellä koko aika maalailla sitten erilaisia stripeja. Näiden lisäksi mitä tapahtuu, niin lavalla, eli tuolla, onko se halli kakkonen virallisesti, niin siellä tota, on koko aika erilaista esiintymistä, eli siellä on erilaisia musiikkiesityksiä, kaiken näköistä. Siellä on jonkun näköinen karbeiskilpailu ja näin, eli tämmöistä tapahtumaa siellä tapahtuu tuolla päälavalla. Puolen tunnin välein tapahtuu aina jotain uutta. Ja muun muassa sitten siellä on lavalla myös sitten haastatellaan näitä Jobsopin tähtiä. Eli lyhykäisyydessään, jos joku ei Bernia ja Liipua on vielä onnistunut telkkarissa bongaamaan, niin Bernie on Briteistä, Lontoosta ja Leipu Bangladesista ja jossain kohtaa herrojen ja tiet kohtasivat ja siitä tuli niin sanottu Job Shop eli London Garage, missä he rakentavat tämmöisiä erittäin uniikkeja autoja. Työnjako on, käsittääkseni se voitte tarkistaa vielä herroilta, että Bernie toimii mekaanikkona, rakentelee autojen tekniikkaa ja sitten Leipu rakentelee autojen ulkokuorta ja Leepulle ehkä ominaista on se, että, että hän ei tee minkäännäköisiä papereita siitä suunnitelmasta, että hän katsoo sitä autoa ja kuten sarjassa on nähnyt, niin vähän aikaa visualisoi asiaa ja levittelee käsiä ja muuta ja sen jälkeen rupeaa rälläkkä laulamaan eli sitten aletaan peltiä rikkomaan ja sitä sitten hit saamaan kiinni uusiin asentoihin, eli kaikki, kaikki osat ja tekemiset on täysin uniikkeja ja tapahtuu siinä paikan päällä suunnitellen herran päässä koko aika suunnitelmat siellä ja avata peli vaikka kysymällä, että mitä, mitä ovat tehneet ja mitä tulevat tekemään. So, I was just telling about the Extreme Car Show and uh, a small introduction of you, what you have done. Can you translate the whole lot in, in English, <laughs> Hebrew or Bangladesh? Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Later Every on. last word. Yeah. We'll listen intently. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you start conversation with you, can we start of... Uh, uh, we have seen on the series that... Uh, You clearly have met and started to make business together, but but what about the story? How how did you get 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 together and, and 
start building cars together. We, we actually met each other through a marriage bureau, and we've been married now about 10 years. And you're joking. I am joking, honestly. Please don't put that in there. Discovery um, found Lipu in Bangladesh, a guy who builds through sheer innovation and technique cars by hand, made out of metal, not fiberglass bits, which you go and buy, or everyone buys in shops nowadays. So they went over to see him. And like me, he's slightly crazy now. Him and me had never ever met each other before, ever. I'd never heard of him, he'd never heard of me. And that's the way it should have been. They met him, they saw his cars, and they loved it. He created the most incredible cars built by hand in Bangladesh, which not many people know as the car building uh, capital of the world. I used to do some technical work for end of all television, but I'd never been on television before. They used to send me questions purely by computer or by letter. I'd answer them and send them back, and they paid me a very big paltry sum for doing it. When they came back from Bangladesh after meeting Lipu, they loved his design and thought the cars were fantastic, and it would make for a great TV show. But they wanted someone, possibly English, who'd work alongside him as a mechanic, someone with an attitude and they found me. They came down to interview me, and they showed me the sort of work that Lipu does, purely by photographs, and they said, how would you feel about going out to Bangladesh and dealing with old school, how I used to do when I was an apprentice some 50 odd years ago, building cars by hand, using old fashioned hammers, old fashioned tools, no high tech, you know, no high technology. They said, yeah, I'd love to do it, and you've got one problem. If you can convince my wife to let me go for two months, I've got no problem giving it a go. I fancy the challenge. So they phoned my wife and they went, yeah, take him. And then flew me out to Bangladesh, we met, and that was it. And it all went downhill from there. We built two cars in two months. And people love the way that you know our interaction works together. Yes, all the arguments that we have are real. There's sometimes when I can punch his lights out, and sometimes when he wants to punch my lights out. But there's a very big, deep respect there underlying with all the arguments. And yeah, you put a mechanic, and you put a designer together, and it's like putting petrol to a match. But you know, Lipu and I have developed a very big, great friendship. We work together, we tolerate each other, but away from the set and everything else, there is a very big, deep respect. And I've got a very big, deep respect for him, not only as a family man, <coughs> but as a very big, good person as well. Go on, us it smash the bleeding plate up. Um, we've always got on very big well, so really that's how we met. And, we did all the programs together. I don't know whether you want to add anything for that. Or I said it all as usual. That's fantastic. Okay, so uh, then if we, if we go to series and, and to your shop, can you tell us something about uh, <coughs> building the cars? What what makes you build these cars? Is, is it like you, you find a customer who tells you what kind of car he wants to be built or how does it go? Basically, what Discovery arranged is that they would choose, through the production company, a car. They obviously, based on the sort of thing which Lee Poo wanted, whether it was a two-door, four-door, one. No, not really. No, no. I agree. I don't agree. I don't yeah, you're doing really it again. No, See, no. always interrupt. I can't say one goddamn thing without like bloody One fine morning, I go to, the, go to the garage and find a car just sitting there, just while we could transform this. Okay, I said, well, let's start. That's it. Oh, we didn't know. Don't you make it as easy as that? I didn't it. Bloody, I didn't it was know. arguments all no, the no. fucking time. Because you didn't want no, this car and you didn't right. want that no, car. No. I knew nothing about the cars. I just go to the garage in the morning and find out the car is sitting there. Or, or, well, we bought this car, the car is on the way. I said, alright. Whatever it is, I'm, I'm going to make a new, new design. It doesn't make any difference to me what car it is. As long as it's, it's a car, the shell is there, or the structure is there. Well, but there is certain the cars design. which you prefer, the ones a two door or a four door. Ah, uh, that's actually not, it's not on my, on my, on my I've seen you levitate and go up the wall. I'm not building that. Probably sometime I said, okay, well, let's, let's get a two door, let's, uh, ah, okay. Ah. Yeah, but it, it's not dependent, it, it doesn't depend on me. I mean, yeah. they decide which car they're going to buy it, they're going to bring it. And uh, all I got to do is design on top of it, that's it. At the end of the day, the important thing was that we only had £4,000 and four weeks to get each car done. Now, Discovery or anyone didn't care how many hours we worked. We worked 36 hours straight, 48 hours. The most important thing, if those cars weren't done within that four weeks, programs collapsed.
because obviously as one runs after another, they've got to be able to do the editing in the program, they've got to be able to move on to the next one. Discovery owned the cars. We didn't build them for clients or whatever. We were given a car, we, it mustn't look like what the original car was. So in other words, if we had a box of Astra, it mustn't look like a box of Astra in the end. Whatever modification was done was left entirely up to me, mechanically, and bodywork obviously up to Rinfu. That was the only criteria which we had to work okay. with. Okay, I just wanted to add something about yeah. with, with that. The, the build process was about, about, about four weeks, right? Four weeks, exactly. It's the build process, but mm -hmm. the filming and you know whole thing took three weeks out of, out of the whole time. Yeah. And basically, we had to work on the car about a week, 10 days max, it's not the four weeks whole time we're no. building this car. We have taken away from the car, we have taken outside for filming, we, you know, we stop, stop and go, stop and go. Basically, out of four weeks, we, 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 we got ten, 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 weeks, ten, ten days, weeks. twelve days max to work on the car. And including doing all the painting, yes. the refurbishment, the interior, really the car going, the road testing, and you're quite right. <laughs> because we were taken away, say they wanted to do a road test with a car half built, where we've got basically a bare size chassis, some of the panels were just tack welded, Mechanically, most of the things are in, but not all of it's got no trim and nothing else. So then we would go away for one, maybe two days, doing the filming purely on that road testing. Yeah, yeah. you're quite right. So really, that four weeks wasn't down to building the car. After the four weeks was probably maybe two, two and a half weeks. The rest of the time was filming away from the actual game. And, and, and also, it's it's very difficult, very difficult when you are designing something or building something. An interruption. I mean. You don't have any prior, you know, uh, you know, any any uh, the timing that okay till that time you're gonna finish it and then we'll take you take you away from it. We'll do do videos outside, we'll do filming outside. Nothing. All of a sudden, stop it right there. We're gonna go. I mean, it was it's challenging and we and we like it. That's the most important thing about. It. More probably the TV show looks looks fantastic. It's yeah. like series of uh, you know hours or series of moments. Well, it's two, but, two and a half thousand hours. Two yeah. and a half thousand yeah. hours of filming That's, cut down to one hour. Yeah. So there's a, a hell of a lot of things you don't see. You see the basic body as Lincoln's cutting it. You see some of the mechanical work, but that is not left up to us. We have no say in that whatsoever. That's purely done in the cutting suite. And obviously what the production company feel that people would actually want to see on the television. Yeah, they kept some of the arguments in there and various other bits and pieces. But at the end of the day, when the car was finished, it was taken away and we never saw it again. Discovery generally used to put it in their headquarters or it was put away into storage or whatever. The only time that we've ever built anything specific was in the last series where we actually did cars for stars, where we built a car for Martin Kemper, we built a car for Johnny Vegas, where we built one for... Lawrence Delalio, uh, where we built one for David Ginola, where we built one for Jules Holland. Those were specific cars for people. And what it was, was these stars gave up their time for us to build a car for them. So obviously, instead of charging the company the money for them to appear, they would actually get to keep the car at the end of the program. So that's the only time. The rest of the time, it wasn't.